Hello, welcome to part two of how to install a car stereo system. This section is about uh, installing stereo head units. Let me start by saying this is the hardest part of installing any car stereo system. Without a doubt, I'm not going to lie. I'm just reinforcing from the last episode that it is also the most important part. So if you can't do this, you may as well just leave your system stock. There's not one other thing you can do to make more impact on your car stereo than to get a new head unit. Right here is an aftermarket head unit. This is a middle grade head unit. About $130. Has everything on it. There are three things you need to install an aftermarket head unit. Number one is the head unit or the radio itself. The second thing you need is a mounting bracket. The mounting bracket for your car is very car specific. There's no general guide I can give you uh, to help you install stereo mounting brackets. This was, this particular vehicle, a 2000 Avalon, was a pain in the butt because these AC controls are connected to your, your, where your factory stereo was. So I ended up losing AC for a while. Um, I had to go in and take all this out, the whole dash, and fiddle under the dash with two fingers trying to put some rods, metal rods, back into place so that these switches would work, these temperature control switches. All cars are different. I'm not saying that you'll have the same trouble with your car, but just remember that this mounting stuff is the hardest part. Once you get by that, pretty much everything beyond the stereo is easy. So that's the first two things you need, are the stereo itself and the aftermarket mounting bracket. Alright, so I've pulled our stereo out and here are the guts. We have some RCA wires. You have all the wires that go to the stereo. Lastly, you have your FM radio antenna cable. So way back here, the last thing you need to install a stereo is an aftermarket stereo wiring harness adapter. These adapting wire harnesses are brand specific. So if you own a Toyota vehicle, like I do here, then you want to get a Toyota aftermarket wiring harness adapter or if you own a GMC it would be the same thing they're they're brand specific so this clip adapts your factory stereo wiring to wiring that is color coded and ready to go with your new stereo your stereo has a clip here this clip comes with your new stereo what I recommend is that you take both of these clips off the new wiring harness that you bought and the wiring harness that came with your radio and wire them together when you're outside the car. Alright, so here's the general wiring for a stereo. You have a 12 volt constant power supply. It's usually yellow. You have a 12 volt switching power supply which switches the stereo on and off and then you have a ground wire that grounds the stereo uh, to the car those are the three important wires the rest of these wires that are all tangled up here are speaker wires the trickiest thing with the wiring is the speakers I have these wires here these are the speaker wires that came off the radio but the reason they're taped off in this case is because I have an aftermarket amplifier powering my speakers. And that's what all these RCAs are for. In most people's case, if you're just installing a stereo head unit, you would use these wires and you'd connect them to these wires that came off of your stereo wiring harness adapter for your vehicle. So that's the wiring. I want to reinforce that this is the hardest part of doing anything with your car audio system. This first step is the hardest and don't get discouraged. This is only the beginning. Things will get much better, much easier, much, 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 much. Just like I said in the last video. And I'll see you again in part three, how to install speakers in your doors and such.
Please subscribe and ask questions. Have a nice day.